tonight we have missionary heroes. We've got James, his wife, Rachel Quarter, and uh, he's going to come. But also we have Pastor R Revenson, uh, uh, DJ. Now, Revenson, think of Stevenson. DJ, think of a guy spinning records, okay, D-I-G-A. So he's going to share a minute and also sing a song. Pastor uh, Quarter is uh, the field director in Haiti. He was in a meeting with Jude Aguzma, one of our members, who's getting Assembly of God credential and be appointed as Assembly of God missionary to Haiti. And he was in that meeting, and they're moving forward with that process, and we're excited about that. We're behind you, Jude. We're behind you, Rosie. We love you. We're so proud of you. Stand up, Jude. Everybody look at Jude. Turn around, Jude. We're behind this man. So right now, who's coming? You? Give it up to James, another great James. <laughs> you can do better than that. Come on, give it up for James Quarter. Thank you. Bless you. Such an honor to be here tonight um, in this church. So with such a heart for missions. It's really palpable here tonight. And thank you to our sister who prayed for the persecuted church and for the nations. That's what it's about. Um, over 17,000 people groups or language groups across the world and 7,000 of them still go unreached according to the Joshua Project. We have, on conservative estimates, over 4 million evangelical co uh, congregations, meaning those are registered ones, not the underground church that's doing so much work. So if you think about that, the laborers are there. We just need to mobilize. We need to capture that Great Commission once again to Go make disciples to all the nations. Amen? So we're excited to be here. Um, it's such an honor to be with my friend, pastor, co-laborer, Pastor Evenson DJ. We've been friends for 10 years in Haiti. My wife and I were called to Haiti in a dream um, out of the medical profession. Myself as a physical therapist, my wife as a physician assistant. It caught us by surprise, and our answer was yes. And that's kind of how mission starts and how it ends. Yes to going, yes to staying, because you keep have to say yes once you're there, and yes to just whatever God has. And so we are just on our first full itineration. We partner with the Assemblies of God in Haiti. We have over 200 preaching points across the nation. Uh, we did medical outreaches. The first few years was a big focus of ours, doing mobile medical clinics and working with Pastor Rivenson and his wife to bring people for evangel evangelistic worship meetings where people could come and hear the gospel and we would worship together and just invite his presence. I learned from in my first 10 years that despite of all of our programs and our strategies and all of our great missiology, it, medical training, all of those things uh, that we come with, uh, the greatest thing we can usher in is his presence. And his presence that changes everything in our most profound moments in those first 10 years were times where we would just be silent and just waiting on his presence to come in and it would shift and it does shift the atmosphere. And so uh, we, I give you a good report from the Haitian church this evening that is growing, that is over uh, 200 years strong. So we are certainly not an unreached people group, but the shift that's happening right now that's so exciting in the nation of Haiti, despite all the challenges that Pastor Evenson will share with you, despite all the unrest that's going on, we are seeing a shift in Haiti we were, not only, we we're not only receiving the scent where the Haitian church is beginning to send out as missionaries to the unreached people groups. The shift is happening in this great, this great thing, uh, God's, his mission, that we are seeing the equipping of the Haitian church to where now, as they mature, they're beginning to understand missions to go. They're beginning to grasp the Great Commission to go to all the nations. Matter of fact, Pastor Evenson's church that's planted in Lakai, Haiti's third largest city, is one of the few churches in Haiti that you'll walk in and you'll see flags from other nations hanging on the walls and coming down from the ceilings. I remember when we built that church, Pastor Evenson had people in the community that came in and said, because this is the mindset that's shifting, they said, what do all those flags mean? Are those flags of countries that have donated to build this church? This was, this is a big shift. And he said, no, no, no. These are the nations that we are sending to, that we are going out as the church in Haiti, that we are sending to the uttermost ends of the earth. That is an exciting cycle of missions, and we're excited about, excited about what God is doing. 
I just wanted to share this as before I invite Pastor Rivenson up. Missiologist Christopher Wright says this about mission. He said, it is our committed participation as God's people at God's invitation and command in God's own mission with, within the history of God's world for the redemption of God's creation. You'll notice the theme there. This is all about him. This is his mission. Tonight, there's so much just pounding in my heart from watching that video tonight. But I'm just going to ask you, as, as we receive Pastor Rubinson to come and share just a few moments, I'm going to ask you just to pray as the Haitian church begins to embrace the Great Commission, not in an inward way, but to go to the nations, to go to the uttermost parts of their country, to reach the diaspora of, of Haiti that are living across the world, and to reach even into the northern parts of Africa and the French language speaking world. We are so encouraged about what God is doing. Rivenson, would you come? Yeah, why don't you bring it over here? So Pastor Rivenson and I, um, I was sharing with Pastor James, when, when, I first, when we first arrived in Haiti, in, in Lakai, we were the first missionaries with the Assemblies of God to live outside of the capital city, about five hours south. So we were trying to connect with local leaders, indigenous leaders, and I talked to the missionary who's been in Haiti, still in Haiti for a long time, and he's like, hey, he started to get to know my heart and my passion, and he said, hey, I think there's a pastor that just planted a church and a nightclub, which is very non-conventional in Haiti. He said, I think you would connect with them because you both are very peculiar. <laughs> now, I don't, I don't know, I didn't know how exactly to take that, but that was in April of 2009. Um, we went to see Pastor Rivenson and his family had just launched in this, this um, nightclub, and got to see his heart, and right away I said, hey man, what's your, what's your vision for Haiti? What's your heart for Haiti? And he said, we just want to reach the marginalized. We want to reach the broken. We want to reach the, those on the street. We want to reach the women who are in prostitution, who are part of human trafficking here in the nation. And I want to just jump ahead, and just before I let him share, in 2014, we were able to plant this church and build this church in the city center of Lakai, which is right at the end of a one-way street. It is an amazing thing. As you drive down this one-way street in the, in the city of Lakai, the whole time you're seeing the edifice of this building, and it's right in the downtown, the, one of the most challenging portions of the city, and always the homeless, the street children, the women who are in a uh, prostitution are all gathered around this place. So God is doing an amazing thing. Pastor Evenson, thank That's you for fun. being here tonight. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. And that's my first time here, not, not in the area, but here specifically. Um, I didn't know he, that he has so good memory. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Come yeah. Right I, I've heard someone saying that if it's not crazy, it might not be God. <laughs> and uh, yes, we are kind of crazy <laughs> and because we know that God called us to do some uh, crazy uh, thing in Haiti. Uh, so it's really something, it's a good place to be when you're crazy for God. Mm -hmm. So I'm bringing all the greetings uh, from uh, Haiti, my family, church, and, and the city of Lakai. I bring all the greetings to my brothers and sister in Christ, and I'm glad to be here tonight. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, hey, wouldn't you tell us a little bit about your journey, particularly your leaving Haiti, coming back to Haiti, and just what that beginning start for you? Yeah, um, I was, you know, you know, I used to live in, out of Haiti, in French Guiana, which is like South Africa, uh, America. Uh, it's close to Brazil. How many know where it is? Brazil, yeah. Okay, it's close <laughs> to that um, country, and I used to live there. And one day, I <laughs> I was attending a, a meeting, a which outreach, and that was God hitting my heart, and I say yes to the Lord. And that was 
the decision that messed up my life in a good way. And uh, years later, God will ask me to go back to Haiti. And I did not really know everything about that, but I said yes again. And uh, I was like missionary in my own country and trying to have a way to start it, start things, started a church, a church. But but I knew that God asked us to raise a new generation of Christian. Amen. And the battle started that way because we wanted to be uh, going like uh, opposite way, where then what people is doing already in the country. So we started the church, we start working, and um, God will call us to establish that, that uh, church in 2008. And in nightclub, in the nightclub, it's strange, strange place in Haiti <laughs> to start church. I don't know here, <laughs> but <laughs> that that was exactly what. We wanted a place where people, any people, could come. Um, so I was, we worked there a year, and then we moved to a small place, and a house we rent uh, after two or three years, at, and we moved to a school, and we rent a, a place, space in a school. Again, that school beca became too small, and we move again, and finally we were praying, praying, praying that God, God will bring us and give us a permanent location. And we were going like crazy. And yeah, <laughs> we, used to, we used to drive around the city, him and I, and just praying for places. We looked at, and this piece of property was, it was sitting there, and it used to be a Masonic Lodge if yeah. you know anything about that. And so it was, it was, it's an old historic building. At one point it was the courthouse in, in uh -huh. Lakai in the city. And we would just, the price tag was too much for us. We just were kind of maybe a little low on faith. And God just kept l highlighting that property. Yeah, and we, we, we used to go put, lay hands on, <laughs> on the property, like, like any crazy people we do. <laughs> Laying hands on a <laughs> wall and we're claiming it claiming it, and God will open doors and then make the story short. And finally, God gave us that building, uh, which is not really a building that we could use. It was like a broken yeah. uh, house. But God will open doors and we'll build, and we're doing it. Now it's a nice building. And uh, we're receiving like 250 people every week. And, and it's really, and anyone can come. So I'm mean, strange. I would be going uh, uh, and welcoming people the way they, they can come. Sandals, jeans, and short, and any, anyhow. It's, it's something in Haiti. It's something in Haiti. Yes. Because people want you to come to church really well, you know, dressed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they cannot do it. You know, and when we stand in the city, we said, you can come anyhow. And uh, our battles began again, began. <laughs> and because all the other people, we say, oh, what are you doing? You, people are not supposed to come that way in church. <laughs> and I say, okay, it's not the Bible saying that. So, yes. and it was a big battle starting. And God will, is faithful and today, we are a discipleship. We're doing yeah. discipleship, training people yeah, to do so we've, their work. The school of ministry that we launched in 2012, the Arise School of Ministry and Leadership, is housed in this facility right in the center of the city on the second story. And so this, this, this church has just become an equipping and sending church, has planted two churches since they planted in 2008. Yep. And God is raising up leaders outside of this church. So it's, it's a whole... It's a whole synergy of things that are happening, and it just started with some faithfulness. Amen? Yeah, so that's why it's crazy, because we don't know where resources we, all the resources we come from. We Absolutely. just uh, uh, um, trust God, and then we do what he asks him, ask us to do, and then he, he shows up every time. Yeah. yeah. Well, we know if, if you've been following the news, Haiti is not getting a whole lot of attention right now, but we are hearing a little bit about it. Um, 
tell us kind of just what's going on in Haiti right now, and personally, what are some biggest challenges for you in the national church right now? Um, this is a really special moment, and we are praying that we can, uh, um, how do you say that, uh, reach a lot of people through that situation. Because mm -hmm. Haiti right now is a really um, challenging place because there is a lot of protests every day, and like three months, like it's like happening since three months. So people, it's really challenging. I was I was talking to my wife. Um, I have my wife, and we have three uh, kids. Even though they they are, you know, what still my little kids. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, she said, even oil they cannot cannot find in South. Yes. Propane. No the cooking fuel, no fuel, no, no fuel, electricity. No open, it's, it's become really hard. It's things, if you can find something to buy, the price is, is really uh, high and high. So it like five times, if you need to buy something, it's like five, five times more. So Haiti right now is difficult. I, by the way, I took 10 hours to get to Port-au-Prince last week to, to get to, to the, to the uh, uh, airport. This is a drive that normally takes about four, four hours. Four, maximum, yeah. maximum. If I'm driving, I take four. Maybe gems take two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Speed the light, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really challenging. And, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine in, back in Haiti. He said, don't get used to too much food here. Because when you'll be back in Haiti, maybe you'll, you'll eat once a day. <laughs> right. I said, okay, thank you for the news, but uh, I'm not thinking about not that right now. Uh, yes, I, I, I have maybe enough reserve. To <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's really tough. When he's saying that, he's director of an orphanage, and he's, his kids are eating once a day now. Yeah, it's so it's so very hard. So for the past 18 months straight, Haiti has been in political and social instability. Um, right now, it is, it is really all of our Assemblies of God missionaries are evacuating in and out. We have a set right there, a, a couple in the capital city right now, but we are really close to pulling them out. Most other agencies are gone. Just because you cannot move on the roads, they are take, they're seizing the roads, a lot of kidnapping, carjacking, mm -hmm. um, a lot of violence taking place right now. So, but we believe in the midst of it, in the midst of the crisis, just like he said, that people will begin to turn to God. And we also believe that the church will arise in this time. We've, we feel like that God has shown us that as mission agencies and missionaries kind of clear out for a moment, perhaps, that the church is going to stand up and, and, and begin to do some amazing things. And as they're already getting, they're shifting that mindset, as I reminded you, they're shifting the mindset that they're not just getting missionaries, but they're starting to send to some of those nations that we prayed for just, just shortly ago. So this, we believe this is part of God. God, he takes this, all this stuff that's hard and is difficult and, it's, and he turns it for good because he's a good God. Yep. Tell us a little bit about your victories over the, I mean, what, what, just give us an example of a few of your victories and what's, yeah, what you're you, excited about, what's, yeah. you know, what's, uh, as you know, uh, God always works in any situation. Yeah. And uh, in parallel, is that a good word? Parallel, yeah. Okay. And we have churches growing and people getting saved. Yeah. And I have an example, I don't know if you know uh, about that in Haiti. Uh, I have a lot of people getting free from bad spirit. And if you know Haiti, there is a, a voodoo and all those kind of things that people uh, used to serve. And then what we do in our church, we have a, a um, uh, weekend encounter weekend with you. And we take those people three days without phone, without any communication. Yeah, and so let me, let me unpack that just a bit. So when somebody get, makes a decision for Christ in Haiti, their church takes them and says, you, gotta, you need to come and have this encounter. And we're going to deal with all this stuff. We're going to deal with some of these things that are deeply rooted into your bloodline and those things. And so, yeah, for three days, 
they have to do this, they have to go, and they go on this weekend encounter. No phones, no outside communication, yep. Yep. and God's done some amazing things. Yep, and we, we've seen a lot of people uh, with a lot of lives changing. And I have an example that young girl will uh, accept Christ, and her father is a voodoo priest. Mm -hmm. And he said, don't go to that church. <laughs> you can go to the the other one there in the Catholic church closed. You see, you can go there, but don't go to that church. And then, because we really active spiritually and, 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 and deliverance and praying for people. And she decided anyway to come and to get baptized. Any, anyway, she said, uh, I know that he could maybe kill me and put me out you know, push my bag and push me out of the house. But I want to get baptized anyway because I, I love Jesus. Amen. And she came and, his, and her father didn't know that she, she was going to, to be baptized and we baptized her. That's a victory and now she's involved in a uh, uh, worship team singing for God. And then I have so much story, for, so much example of people being saved and, and uh, free from those voodoo uh, spirit in Haiti. Many, many, many. And today they are, they are part of my leadership and uh, being uh, leaders of uh, sales group. And it's really wonderful when we're seeing that. That's the reason we, we want and every day saying yes to God to stay because he is moving. Amen. He is moving. And one time, I, w I remember uh, that question, I don't know if you remember, how you do? How do you stay here? I, uh, and it's only the vision that kept us there. It's not about us. It's not about anything else. It's the vision, the way God is asking us to raise a new generation of people trusting him, and a new generation. And then... Every, every day we see victory in people's life, and that's encouraging us. Amen. So that's a powerful testimony of, as you are a missions church, you invest in missions, this is the fruit. Life's transformed, and, and, and just, uh, just amazing stories of God's mm -hmm. grace on a people group. Um, just share with us just briefly, um, like, what are you sensing? We, this March, we launched uh, together what we call the Arise Ecclesia Network, where we're helping train and renew, do uh, advancement for church planters and leaders in Haiti. Um, we're really excited about that, that we are gonna kind of just gather this group of young leaders and older leaders and just those who want to just follow New Testament patterns for planting the church across the nation and even into the diaspora. Um, and this is really something that's beating on both of our hearts. But why don't you share just a little bit about like just what God's doing in your heart right now. We are. Um, um, <laughs> it's about, you know, um, so when God asks us that, it's bigger than what my head can uh, actually hold. Because we, we, the vision is to do discipleship and establish churches all in the big, big, big cities in, in Haiti. And then uh, getting at a point to send sending people. Our church is a um, um, sending church and, and God is using it, us and, and my heart and our heart is to establishing churches and, and seeing missionary from Haiti uh, being, being, being uh, established and, and sending from Haiti church. We are not there yet yeah. But we know we're getting there. We're getting yeah. there. And God is faithful to accomplish what he, what he promised. So we, that's a, a, our prayer. We really believe to, uh, in, the, in that what God is uh, mm. saying us, telling us, putting in our heart. So establishing church churches, raising new leaders, in new generation of Christians, and then sending people. Amen. Gathered to scatter. Yeah. So would you believe that with us tonight that we are seeing a shift in the nation of Haiti? Yep. Um, and it's 
it's on a small scale right now, but right now, this, this wouldn't just be amazing to see this country that's been known as the least and the, and the, and the worst and the poorest and all these definitions that, that hang around Haiti. Anytime you, you know, Google search Haiti, you're going to get the, all these things that just kind of hopeless and destitute, but that God would take a nation like Haiti and send it to be part of this end time harvest to send missionaries to the ends of the earth. We believe this and we're calling for the church to arise in Haiti. Amen? Yes.